Hey! 
Thanks be to God. Amen. God is good. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
So appreciate you. Yes, thank you. Hallelujah. Again, Lord, bless the musicians, Lord Father. May the anointing here tonight. Yes, my Lord. Yes, 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 Yes,
Romans 8, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. May the Lord let you bless you to the reading of his word. Shall we pray? Dear God and Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. Thank you for the reading of your word. Bless your word to our hearts. Speak to our hearts. We've come, Lord, tonight to hear from yes, you. Yes. May you speak to us. Yes, yes. Meet us at the point of our need yes, and draw us closer to you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. Amen. Um, anybody can remember what was the title of the message last week? I appreciate all the testimonies that we had last week. Take notes, carry no book, remember what. I think it was God dealing with us as sons. And we said, remember that uh, we're dealing with the book of uh, Christ, the mystery of God revealed. I was going to, uh, we've got the book there at the back. I need to take it out and give you. So I'm just going to use one quote there. Um, slide number four. He says, <clears throat> gracious, in, in, in the second paragraph in Christ's mercy of God, we gracious heavenly Father, we are approaching thee again this morning for mercy and guidance of the Holy Spirit today. As it dawned upon us that we should meet together this morning and to teach thy word, and that we might know how to live in this present day. And what is the time of day that we're living in? We would ask thy holy guidance to our thoughts, our hearts. Now, just part of two, so we just speak on that. Based on that, we're going to say uh, the title of the message, um, What is Life? In the morning devotion, we'll touch a little bit of what is your life. Also, uh, led by the Spirit. And there's a further subheading. What does it mean to be led by the Holy Spirit? All can say, everybody can say you're led by the Spirit and things like that. Uh, I know some other people use cliche, uh, how are you under the blood? Or some things that are being led. Just use those words, in those terms. Uh, slide number five, he goes on uh, in respects, he says the same thing. Now Lord, help me to say something that's in his prayer that will help some poor, weary soul here tonight. Help me that it might be also words of correction. That we might know how to behave ourselves. What we should do and how we should live in this present world if we expect to make heaven our home. So, being led of God, we need to know we come here, for example, to ask for guidance of the Holy Spirit. That we might know how to live in this present day and the time of day we're living in. Ask for your guidance of our thoughts, he said, and our hearts. And then he goes on in respect. We might know how we to behave ourselves, what we should do, and how we should live in this present world if we expect to make heaven our home. So we've got to be very serious Amen. about our walk with the Lord. It's a matter of life and death, not just you know, saying, I'm coming to church and I'm going home and that uh, sort of thing. Praise the Lord. Um, Rarishi couldn't make it, finished working with Leighton, but they will come. And uh, Debbie and Esti have gone for the weekend to Mozambique. They should be back Monday afternoon to remember the prayer. Amen. Um, and Anusha is not here because she's resting. She had a 
uh, Caesar, amen. Praise the Lord. Um, anybody knows who was the king? Maybe there are the older people might remember, but we'll say those under 50. Do you know who's the king? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Yeah. Where? From where? From Germany to. Why Why Come help. That there are no roads alone. Mm -hmm. Through the bush and whatever he went. And they got a horse there at the Esplanade. And he's there, you know, a, a statue of him on the horse. And even if you see a statue of a horse, and if the four feet are down, uh, there's something I think of the rider where they died or well or, or something. And one foot up, it meant something. So each thing means something. Now, a lot of people have done a lot of things. How many of you can remember your great grandfather's name? How many of you can't remember your grandfather's name? But they lived there. They made an impact in their community at that time, but it is forgotten. Uh, who was Enric for food? The uh, it's the architect of apartheid, the Prime Minister of South Africa. Mm -hmm. I think 1948, when uh, the Nationalist Party became, came into power, and then they introduced apartheid. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and any, anybody who was Demetrius Offenders, the colored guy, mm -hmm. he, I'm not sure whether he stabbed or he shot. Uh, uh, for foot in court. He was caught, with him caught, caught orderly. And so I think he came in with some weapons and didn't probably check it. And his claim to fame killed the Prime Minister and the Fufut. Now, people achieve a lot of things. People can write about Zuma. People can write about Mandela. Only thing we know about Thurl, he had I think, uh, about four million dollars or whatever in his uh, farm. He did nothing else for the country. <laughs> Useless, he was related to prison. Now, the question is, what, what was my question in the title of the message? What is, life? What is your life? Uh, so many of these people were here, made money, lived, they died. <clears throat> and people might not even remember them. Jesus Christ, we can remember him. He, he had an effect upon many people's lives. Brother Ram, he would have been 115 years last week. People in the message still remember him. The other people not in the message too will still remember him because a little bit they heard about him, they were criticized because of what negative things they might hear. Now, what is your life? What are the people who, what will the people remember you by? You know? Job 14 verse 1. Slide number six. A man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Would you agree on that? Yeah. As most of the parents, they tell you with the children. When say man, they mean even a woman, right? Child. We all have to be born of a woman, right? A few days. Not very long. You might do 70, 80 years. How many years allocated to man? That's what they say. I'll read your scripture and tell you, even tell you 80. 
so you're still going to have me here for another <laughs> couple years. <laughs> um, so what are the most important things in your life? In Luke 12 verse 34 says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If you think, hey, I must make more money, I must do this, I am coming church, I should be working overtime. And you know, all the way your treasure is, there will your heart be. So if you really want to know about yourself, see what you take pleasure in, what you enjoy, what you like to do, that's where your heart is. You find a plant, uh, I, I don't know if you have that in your homes now, but it was called the money plant. They should put it in a little, even a globe like, or a little thing, and leave it there and it'll start growing. Where, which side does it grow? Towards the light. Towards the light. You don't want to plant it down. <laughs> <laughs> they say, if that grows well, you have a lot of money. <laughs> now, in wouldn't grow any side. So what is important to you? Where your treasure is, there will your heart be. In the message entitled Life, the message says, and they call that life, so drinking, smoking, uh, and women spoke of those young girls, 18, 19 year old hotel, and they had a ring on their finger, but they were all uh, scantily clad and all that. It says they call that life, why it's death, and they don't know it. Now, we would say this is the life, party, drinking, smoking, drugging, going out with other women, uh, and the clubs and all that, you may say that is life. That is not that. That is death. You drink, you have a headache, you have a barbie the next day. Everything has uh, its effect. Slide number eight. The thing that you call life becomes so miserable till many times people take their life. So that they could not be, so that if they take their life, that could not be the life that God is speaking of. Because you cannot take God's life. Neither can you give God's life. You cannot give God's life to anyone, and neither can you take it. Many think life is just things, material things, accumulation. And it's seen in the priorities of their life. What is their priority? What comes first? Your career, to get married, it's good to get married, the Bible says not good for a man to be alone, and a woman not to be alone. What comes first? Having children, making money, buying a house, or doing this, doing that. Slide number 10. And what we call life now, is only a shadow of the negative. My hand against the wall, you can see. You might not see clear on the wall, but you can see the outlines and things, and it, it, you know, have an idea. It doesn't tell you the mud fingerprints and you know all those kind of things. What we call life now is only a shadow or a negative. We all like to rejoice, but we can rejoice over the right thing. That shows that we are hooked up with the real thing. When we rejoice over the right thing, but when we rejoice over the wrong thing, it shows we are hooked up with the wrong thing. What do we rejoice with? Are you rejoicing at the people in the world, or are they wearing, uh, you know, short dresses or body cleaving clothes or? or doing all this, you know, things and um, partying and all those kind of things. And um, they're saying that rejoicing. 
But there's something rejoicing that is greater than that. Now, we sometimes traditionally get a cup a custom drink. You might have a bunny chow, you might have biryani, and you must have coke. Psychologically. But you realize coke is not really good, any cold drink is not good. Then somehow or other you manage with water. Good water. Now you can't drink water from the tap. But the coke doesn't really satisfy your thirst. When you drink water, then you feel some satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So these things that's in the world and the activities that we so-called rejoicing over, and it may be the wrong thing, they don't give much satisfaction. Remember the advertisement for cigarettes? He says, Lexington, I think they say, after action, satisfaction. <laughs> What's the next best thing to a Lexington? It's just another Lexington. First one didn't satisfy you, how come the second one is going to? The next slide, life again. If we are rejoicing over the world and the evil things, our minds and our souls are inspired by below. Boogie woogie music, they used to call it that time, today we call it different names. Dances, heartaches, drinking all these other things that we, that we run after, and all these other things that we run after, it's from below. But if we rejoice in the spirit, that we have eternal life, and we raise our emotions to God and praise Him, then we have joy. Yeah. Now, when you want to be in the presence of God, when you enjoy listening to the Word, when you enjoy listening to gospel music, when you enjoy talking about the Lord, you find it's your joy comes from above. It's a plant reaching out to the light. Amen. Because you're alive, you're not dead. And there's joy. But if you find you, you as a Christian, uh, brother, sister came to your house and you can't wait for them to go. You know, because your joy is not in that. Our joy is in some other things. The world thinks we might be crazy. Going to church and reading and studying and, or doing those things, you know. Uh, slide number 13. That's the scripture I'll be reading. 90, Psalm 90, verse 10. The days of our years are three score years and ten. How many is that? Does that mean? Three score and ten. They didn't teach you that in school. Okay. Well, score is 20. Three score is 60 and 10 is 70. <laughs> and if by reason of strength there be four score years, so by strength, by grace of the Lord, it can be forced now. So Louis, Nancy, you're you stuck with him for 10 more uh, extra years. <laughs> he, he was going to throw in the towel when he reached 70. How many more years to reach 70, Louis? Uh, 15. 15? What's your age? <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, you're that, yeah. <laughs> So 70 says 10 more. People are living longer. A lot of people we know that are in the 80s and some people we know that in the 90s. Azaria's great-grandmother is 95. Huh? Yeah, 95. So four score years. Yet is the strength, labor, and sorrow for it soon cut off and will fly away, will die. Pastor Dan is 80 years old today. Mm -hmm. Jesus says the next slide, John 10:10. 10, 10, I come, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. So anything outside of Jesus is a perversion. I mean, I tell you, go anywhere, go Cape Town, go to uh, overseas to they say Durban County. They might bluff the people. In Cape Town, they say, no, you'll never get double curry. They don't know what double curry is. 
But there's one place recently they said they very good, they cook very well. We went to um, Disney World, one of the hotels there. We went to have a meal, and on the menu was written Durban curry. <laughs> I said, hey, call the cook, I want to talk to him. You mustn't bluff the people. Hey, then the weather told him and all him. I said, I want the Durban curry. And they uh, were, you know, on the toes and things like that. And when they brought the food, they're watching from the corridor to see how they actually. But it was very nice. It was very nice. They had the nice spices and all that. Now, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly, overflow. So this joy really, only in Jesus Christ. Amen. When you ask some people, what is life in general terms? They will say life is the period between birth and death. That as though nothing is before you're born and nothing is after you're born. This is not so. The Bible teaches that there is life before physical birth and there is life after physical birth. Slide 16. Jeremiah 1 verse 5. Before I formed thee, in the belly I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So before you were born, God knew you. Right? Amen. So that means life was before that. Hebrews 9.27 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Dead people don't stand in judgment. You were right. So there's life beyond the gate. So don't get uh, influenced by people that tell you this is life where and they're restricted to from the time a person is born to the time a person dies. In comparison to eternity, it's hard for us to really explain what eternity is. We can explain to some extent. But say you got how many senses? Six. Sure. <laughs> Tell me what the senses are. Uh, sight, hearing, smell, touch, uh, taste. Huh? What's the last one? Taste. Taste. Taste, okay. Yeah. And then That's five. Yeah. Every person has five, but I think you're a Christian because sixth one is faith. <laughs> right. Now, a person who is blind doesn't have one of the five senses. How are you going to explain to him the beautiful rose, beautiful sunset, the beautiful mountains? You know, to put it in, he hasn't at sight at all, born blind. He, will, he can never understand. So, if you look at eternity forever and ever and ever, forever is a time, but this is no beginning, no ending. But the Bible says it is like vapor. You boil some water, steam comes up, it just disappears. Just a couple seconds. You might think you're enjoying the pleasures, you're sacrificing, you're enjoying life, this is life and all. But time goes quickly. Mm -hmm. Somebody else's birthday today, another sister goes to another church. So I phone her, I know Dan, Pastor Dan's birthday as well. She used to be in Pastor Dan's church. And so I usually phone her, then I remind her, Pastor, I forget sometimes. She says, Yeah, I know. That when she was young, she was there, they should cut the cake in Dan's church. Now, um, during the year, I probably spoke to her maybe twice, we'll say. And before that, maybe and about every year and about day. Now, before you know it, a year goes up. The time
time in lectures of the phone, the pharmacy every month for chronic medication. Hey, I told you, it's another month went by me. Before you know it, it's there. So time, life is like debate by So anything you, you think you're holding on to something, you're enjoying something here that's temporal, it'll pass away. And soon, you'll have to hang in there and hold on. We each have our own interpretation of life. But the unbeliever thinks of life as an accident, cosmic accident, you would say. But the believer acknowledges life as a sacred trust from God. Job 7, 6 says, My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. Those of you who are invited to know, weaving the Bible, the shuttle goes so fast. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. The truth is, life is not found in pleasures of the world, in performance, achievements, in possessions. You got uh, uh, so many, I, I know so many rich people, besides these crooks in uh, uh, parliament and municipality, other believers as well. They got about 10 cars, not cheap cars. How are they going to drive all of it? This guy goes to his house, starts it up, and <clears throat> he, I mean, they be practical. Buy one car if you want second car. Maybe they don't need those other ones. The cars will pack up to millions of friends. This one guy is a multi-millionaire. He's got car Lamborghinis and this and that. But the car he likes to drive is that uh, popular BMW, the old ones. I think 323 or something. He's got about four. And he says, uh, one time he was with the traffic lights, BMW, three to three. People have the, the strength to achieve something. And they get no satisfaction. I spoke to another connection of mine, the young guy, his cousin was, his father was my cousin, and he's running a big businessman. He bought an M2. I heard of M3, I didn't hear of M2. And he gave me all the stories about the car. And his son was involved in an accident, only 12,000 kilometers of a car, saying, oh, this almost lost his life. Now you can have things, accumulation of things, they're not going to bring you joy. Right. can bring you death. But life is found in the person of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus said time and time again that he is the giver of life, the author of life. Mm -hmm. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Mm -hmm. You die, you can live again. At times, we as Christians get sidetracked as to what is the real in this life. We think material possessions, popularity, recognition, and this, that, and the other, we get sidetracked by it. In John chapter 6, slide number 19. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, they said, this is a hard saying, who can hear it? Some things we hear might seem to be a hard say. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, and he said unto them, Don't this offend you? Sometimes people might get offended when we talk about women's clothing or men's this or uh, you know stuff. So we've got to talk about it because a lot of people think it's fine. But sometimes people might get offended. He says, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if you shall see the Son of God, led by the Spirit? And now, one of the most wonderful things of God and the Christian, the connection of the fellowship between God and the Christians, is 
that they are the sons of God. They are sons of God and led by the Spirit of God. Amen. So if you're a son of God, then you're led by the Spirit of God. Amen. So what is the leading of God? Now some people think because they are a Christian, they baptize and they go to church, they pay their tithe, therefore they are a son of God. That doesn't make you a son of God. No, don't do that. You should be paying your tithe. You should be coming to church. You should be reading your Bible. You should be praying all of that. If you are a son of God, you will do that. But those things don't make you a son of God. The next line says, the greatest thing I found in Christian life is letting the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. And his work is marvelous. Mm -hmm. So how do you know that the Spirit in you is the Holy Spirit? You're standing in a street corner and smoking can't be the Holy Spirit. You're standing in the street corner and you see one girl, short skirt and whatever, and then you start whistling. Not Holy Spirit. Right? So what you do testifies of the Spirit within you. Identifies the Spirit within you. We assume we are doing the will of God because it seems like a good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea, so I think that we will know. Being sensitive to the Holy Spirit is important if we want to see it as us. In any, any sphere of our life, whether it's healing, whether it's family, whether business, or in the church. Yeah. The, only the Holy Spirit sees and knows everything that should be done. That's why it is so imperative to learn how to follow His leadership if we want to be successful in life. One of the most important things outstanding in the life of Jesus, he said, I do nothing except my Father. Mm -hmm. So he was led of God. Mm -hmm. Now you can't just rely on the promptings in your heart. Because the scripture says, uh, in John, I think it was, I didn't write it there. James. Turn your Bible to James chapter 1. How many of you know who John Lennon was? Sorry? One of the members of the Beatles. Yeah. He was, he had a bad childhood and uh, he wrote a lot of ungodly songs to imagine with little no God and all that. But he was a person <coughs> that other parents told the children not to associate with. James 1, verse 14. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So you are enticed, you're drawn away, and you're tempted. By what? The lust that is inside of you. So Brother Russian says, come, let's go and have a shot. He's tempting you. But there's got to be something inside of you to respond. And Russian doesn't say me. I'm just saying. And uh, so you look at bad influence. People can come and tell me, oh, do this and do that. Oh, I won't do it. I don't want to do it. Uh, so it, it starts with inside of you. But every man that is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust, not somebody else's lust, something that's on the inside of him, the plant, it's alive, so it's drawing towards the light. Verse 15. Then when, we, when lust and conceive inside you, it's conceived. You whistle at the girl and then you ask her for a phone number and then you make the call and this, that. When lust had conceived, 
it brings about sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings it for death. Now people don't realize the steps that goes there. And it started because something was not right on the inside of you. Drawn away by his own lust and enticed. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, even a person might leave churches. You find they leave a trail of churches because they take the problem with them. I was talking to somebody about that, and then they told me, you know, one uh, lady said, no, she, she built a few churches, came, she said, no, she, it's all false in the church, she, I'll go and find another church. So the pastor said, okay, when you find that perfect church, before you go to the church for me, and lo and behold, one day she phones him, pastor, I found the perfect church. The pastor said, please don't go there because the church will not be perfect if you get there. <laughs> we see with our tinted glasses, we see what we want to see. Praise the name of the Lord. <clears throat> the uh, video for this week is Holy Habitations by Brother Wayne Lawson. We'll send you the link and we have a few DVDs for those who do not have Wi-Fi and would like, but you have a DVD machine then you can take that one DVD. Holy Habitations. You are the holy habitation. Mm -hmm. God. We know God dwelt in Jesus Christ. But where is he now? He wants to dwell mm -hmm. in your body. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Skip a few of these. John 6, verse 66, line number 28, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Right. Why did Peter stay? We believe, he says, and I'm sure thou art the Christ, mm. the Son of the living. If you know who he is, you have a personal relationship with him, nothing can shake you. Amen. That church will be built on a solid rock. Amen. Psalmist David said, Thy loving kindness is better than life. Amen. Have fun in the world, do this, do that. I believe we should go for holidays and we should do things and deal. And, uh, but, Something that's better than life, the life of this world, is the loving kindness of God. We need, once you experience that, you won't fall short. Mm -hmm. Slide number 30. And this is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God, to the Father, he says, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So you want eternal life, not because you know the pastor of the church, not because you know the doctrine of the church, not because you know this, that, or the other, but you may, they may know you, God, the Father, the only true God. So led by the Spirit of God, we find guidance and purpose. Being led by the Spirit means following the Holy Spirit's guidance, even if you, it tells you something you don't agree with, but it agrees with the word. Following the Holy Spirit's guidance as revealed in the Bible. Why are you, someone tells you, no, you baptize in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
But you look through the Bible and see nobody was ever baptized in that way. So you have to follow what the Bible says. It's a journey of surrender, of discernment, and an alignment with God's will. It affirms that our spiritual journey is marked by this guidance. And it signifies our kinship with the divine. When we do what the Bible says, it shows that we're influenced by the one who wrote the Bible. Yeah. We're guided by the one that does things. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. The problem says we sometimes get one another's spirits. The children get the parents' spirit, even the walk can talk like them and whatever. You know, times two children talk just like that. You can't make the difference out. So we talk like our parents. Our Father. We've got to talk like Jesus Christ. What he said, how he said, what he did. In slide number 33, Galatians 5. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So there's a warring between the flesh and the spirit. For the flesh lusted against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. You see that lovely food? Now I always tell you know, my grandchildren as well. Even if you like something, you, you, you must, if it's six pieces of drumstick, and there's six people there. You can't take two. You gotta worry about other people. Mm -hmm. The very uh, lovely child wanna take it and no, no matter how much you want it, you can't take it. <laughs> right. You're denying somebody else right. what's for them. So walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now sometimes you know we love money more than anything else. The other day, I don't know if I told you this, I went to the set and Levi to, uh, we told him we went to have some breakfast. So I told him, look, you can order what you want to. But I'll give you a hundred bucks and you pay for your, uh, your breakfast. So you can choose what you want to and you, that within a hundred bucks, you can put more money and buy. Set so says, He'll have water. <laughs> he don't want to spend it on the house. <laughs> then, where, anyhow, I paid for it. And, uh, so we, I gave him down the box. And then we went, and then his phone, the cover was, the uh, back cover was broken, and the glass was shattered, and uh, we could still see. And I went to the shop to find uh, a good price, and then the back cover was 199 and now I asked him, okay, well, if you pay the hundred bucks, then I'll pay that hundred bucks. He said, okay. He didn't want to pay for breakfast, <laughs> but he prepared to pay for the cover. Because the phone is more important to him. So we make our choices. We must walk in the spirit, he says, and shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other. So you cannot do things that you would. So you don't want to do things that are not right because you're walking in the Spirit. But if you are led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. So if you're led of the Spirit, the body feels hungry. Uh, Quinton fasted on Thursday, on Wednesday. That's good. I think maybe you said one time before he fasted and fasted. Things felt very good. I think we should give him a hand. <laughs> Young boys coming in to the message now and desiring to do that. Praise the name of the Lord. So the flesh, anything. You go, I told you, you know, if you go to the park somewhere. The car, car guard don't even tell you, don't even see you, don't guide you. When you leave him out, then he'll come out to collect money. The flesh tell you he don't deserve it. Don't give him. 
So it's hard to beat the flesh, I give him. Let the flesh get angry now. Mm-hmm. You've got to go against the flesh. Mm-hmm. If we let of the spirit, you must, anything that the flesh says, must, say you must eat or, you know, or whatever the case might be. Try and go against that. Mm-hmm. Next slide. Galatians 5. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, <coughs> murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do such things do not inherit the kingdom of God. We should not, cannot, and what is going to help us to overcome that is if we have the Spirit of Christ in us. Can you imagine the Spirit of Christ doing any of that? Next slide, Galatians 5. But the fruit of the Spirit tells you what Spirit is in you. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. That's the way he says, no law. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with their affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So your walk, your daily walk, should be the Spirit. So the Spirit liberates us from legalistic concerns. I don't smoke because they throw me out as the pastor. Not legalistic. But we, the Spirit invites us to a higher realm of understanding and grace. Praise the Lord. Matthew 4, 1. Next slide. Then Jesus, led up of the Spirit, then the, when was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Did he say, no, 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 I don't want to go. You know, I'm hungry, I can't go. He went. He surrendered to the leading of the Spirit. His obedience to this inner promptings shaped his earthly ministry. So, we want to be led by the Spirit. The elections are coming up. I think Zuma can't stand for elections. Why? Because he's got a criminal record. Less than five years old. That's a law. So he thought by, then, you know, Going into court, they called him, he didn't come. So he thought he was a great guy. But he, whatever you do, it will come back to bite you. I see so, overturned it. Sorry? I see overturned it. Today? Yesterday. Yesterday. Um, today, prerequisite. We've got to have the Holy Spirit in us before we can be led by the Spirit. This country is corrupt. Even the law courts and all are corrupt. Now come back to the scripture we read Romans 8 that's slide 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God they are the sons of so what qualifies your sons of God if you're led by the Spirit of God? If you're led by something else, then this qualifies you. For you have not received the spirit of bondage. We're not bound, not by the spirit of bondage again to fear. Why? Because we have received the spirit of adoption. You can't adopt somebody who doesn't think and act the way you think and act. So we have the spirit of adoption. Like <coughs> precious faith. The next slide. Romans 8 1. Now there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. 
No condemnation to walk up to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of what God did by sending His Son, Jesus. Next slide. Romans 8, 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. We can only walk after the Spirit if we have the Spirit of God in us. So, we've got to get that first. 8.8, eight, next slide, it says, So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But we in the flesh. He says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. The spirit has control. We may have some mistakes and things, you know. But you are not in the flesh. But the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised, him, raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. By his spirit that dwelleth in you. Now, to worship God, <coughs> we can't force you to worship. Something within you, the spirit of God, you will want to worship. The plant will go towards the light. So we need it to yield and surrender to his spirit. Yeah. That his spirit takes control. We're just going to watch a little clip now. After that, I'm going to call Sean to lead us into worship. Christ in the great crucial moment. 
That's the reason we can't be a sweet smelling savior. But he was, and these Magi gave frankincense. Now they gave him myrrh also. And anyone know that myrrh is a very costly but bitter herb? Myrrh. What did myrrh represent? His great supreme sacrifice. Amen. It crushed that young life in Calvary where the sins of the world ground him into this. Go because the king, <coughs> frankincense of his sweet loving life, and a myrrh because of his sacrifice for sinners that he died. There he was wounded for our transgressions, <coughs> bruised for our iniquity. The chastity of our peace upon him with his stripes we were healed. That's why they offered him Mary. Being warned of God in a dream, they went the other way. Didn't turn back, but their their journey was completed. Amen. The star had finished its course. What does the star mean to us today, friend? Daniel gives us the answer. Daniel 12, 3. It says, those that are wise and know their God shall shine as the permanence of the heaven. And those that turn many to righteousness shall shine as stars forever and forever. What are we today then? We are stars. Every born again Christian is a testimony to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A star to reflect the power and holiness of the Lord Jesus to reflect him in his life, to perfect him in his speech, to perfect him in his healing power, to perfect him in his resurrection, to reflect him in every way that he was reflected to us by God the Father. We are stars. Watch. What kind of a star should you be? This star was not guided by its own power. It was guided by the celestial power of Almighty God. And if we're ever going to reflect sinners to Christ, we've got to be guided by the Holy Spirit. Romans 8 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that's in Christ that walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. If we're going to be a star to reflect the light of Christ, to bring sinners to Him, we've got to be guided by the Holy Spirit. Right? And we cannot be an ordinary. We have to be unusual. We cannot educate the world's affair, but really it is sacrifice before the Lord. We prostrate ourselves, as the Magi did in the presence of the King of Kings, to reflect his life. You are a star. Every Christian is a star. Amen. The Amen. guy of the lost, the guy of the weary, the son of the traveler, to those who are seeking. And the star cannot be guided by itself. It must be led by the Spirit. Amen. It must reflect the brilliancy of God in His life to abstain from the things of the world and to live godly and soberly in His present life. Amen. It must reflect the light of its great one and shine. What are we to do then? To rise and shine the light of God. Amen. To the dying in death darkness of this world, we are to reflect and shine the presence of the Lord Jesus in his resurrecting power. Amen. As he is yesterday, so is he today to reflect him. But remember, then the star again, when it's finished its course, it takes no honor. The star just brought the man to their destination and showed them that. But we take no honor to ourselves when we've got our, our patience and our, our, our persons that we're leading when we've got them, we must dishonor ourselves and lead them to the great and perfect light, Amen. which shines the light of every man that comes into the world. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Not a myth called Santa Claus. Amen. Not some church by denomination, but that true, red, perfect light. Amen. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen.
last slide of my
powers will take the Lord. It's the name of your word, Lord. It's the name of your life you've given us, Lord. Lord Father, we will put our life in your hands, Lord Father. We like put God in the life of Lord, Lord. We look, Lord, on the enemy, Lord. Lord, Lord. We ask you to make the decision now that you're possible in your hands. We all know before we know it, Lord. That it turns the life we want to want, Lord. May you bless us, Lord. May you be our portion, Lord. Father, may you guide us, Lord. May you use us, Lord. The way you want to use us, Lord. Lord, Father, may you make the way you speak for us, Lord. Let's get to have new mercies that are on us, Lord. Father, Father, Lord, 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 you Outside. Any announcements? Um, yes. It's Nash's birthday tomorrow. Nash's birthday. We'll pray for them on Sunday. Okay. And any other announcements? Youth meeting next week, Friday. Youth meeting next week, Friday. And question and answers. And question and answers. You must submit the questions, please. If you've got any questions you would like answered, or you've got anything that you need to. Uh, to. It is a youth meeting, it's baptism. So anybody else that's not baptized would like to come and they can they welcome even if you don't fall out of the category of youth. Amen. What time? What day? Friday? Seven. Seven o'clock. Right. As we leave, we will see us on higher ground. I'm pressing on the upper way. Yeah. 